Hey folks, your main man Sabado. Uh, today I want to talk to you about something that's been on my mind and that I get a lot of questions about and something that I think might be a bit enlightening for those of you that might be thinking about early retirement. So, uh, but before I get into that, I do want to welcome you back to the channel if you've been here before. And if this is your first time, welcome to the channel. I'm Sabado. I retired about a year ago. I retired at the age of 51. And I this channel is really designed just to share my story and my journey with you. And it's never an expectation that everybody retires early because there's a lot of things that have to go right in order for a person to retire. So my expectation is never that you retire early, but my expectation is that you live your best life. And in my mind, living your best life is controlling your time, doing the things that you want to do, and just having the right perspective to get all you can out of this thing called life. And so on that note, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. So today I want to share with you the four stages that I've gone through and I think most retirees go through, particularly when they retire early, uh, because retiring early, as easy as it seems, just walking away from a job, never going back, it's like anything else. There's a, there's a grieving process, if you will, that, that you feel when you don't have to go to work anymore. It's a, it's a transition like anything else. And so... I want to start with those, with those four stages. And if your stages are anything different, let me know in the comments because I know that my journey is a certain way and I have a certain way of dealing with certain things and different people have different ways of dealing with some of the same things. But I think the idea here is that we can all learn from each other. So on that note, let me get into the first stage. The first stage that I experienced was just the raw excitement. or I call that the honeymoon phase. That phase lasted for me about two to three months. And it was just that time when I had that newfound freedom from work. I went in on my last day and the next day I did not have to wake up and go to work. And so, I, but, but I, during that time, I really spent a lot of time just organizing, trying to do a bunch of stuff. And I, and I think more so than anything, trying to prove to myself that I'm actually retired. I actually am here because it's weird not to have to wake up after a 30 year career and not have to do anything and to be able to wake up whenever you want to wake up. And so I think I've mentioned to some of you that I started to play the piano. Uh, my first month out, I went and did a substitute teaching uh, rotation started picking up a lot of hobbies and started to really put things into play, vacations and just all these interests, because in my mind, I was just excited. It was this honeymoon phase of I didn't have to do anything. I was completely free and I wanted to prove that almost like I didn't believe myself. And so that went on for about two to three months. And then after that, I went into a stage of confusion and that was from about the third to about the fifth month. And I started to realize that a lot of the things that I, I pushed into my life that I thought was I, I was interested in, I wasn't. Now, I'm still interested in the piano. I'm still interested in gardening. Am I as interested in substitute teaching? Not as interested as I was when I first retired because I, I did that and I understood that that's work and I'm not interested in working. Um, I started to understand some of the relationships that I had a little bit different thinking, I'm just going to go out to all the people right now that I know that aren't working and go and spend time with them. And that didn't work for me. Um, and what was, it, it got a little tricky for me because I was, I, I no longer was who I was, but I hadn't quite figured out my path forward. So I knew I was no longer this heavyweight executive that was a super important person in the world that everybody wanted to talk to. But I didn't know what being retired actually looked like. And I felt like I should have figured that out. But you can't really figure that out until you get there because none of us are socialized to just have complete control of our time. It's kind of a weird concept, but I think anybody that th that's out there that's retired can understand. And I'm not saying that I ever at any point felt like I wanted to go back to work because I'm certainly not that guy. But I didn't know who's the new Sabado. The old Sabado was working hard, doing a bunch of things, always pushing, always going, always trying to elevate. Who's the new Sabado? So that created a little bit of uh, confusion, but that only lasted for a couple of months. Uh, then I got into what I call the allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Sabado. 
So it was, I, I call this the reintroduction phase. And this is where I started to find my groove, where I started to get comfortable with what I call the, the gray life of retirement. And what I mean by that is, is most of the time we have an idea or we feel comfortable when we have routines. We feel comfortable when we have a realistic expectation of what's going to happen next. And we have some type of structure around our lives. But when you retire, uh, you don't necessarily have that hardwired in. And so whatever structure you have is a structure that you implement on your own life. So I'll give you an example. Uh, last week, I told my wife, I said, I'm up every night until 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm waking up at 9, 10 o'clock every morning. And I like waking up in the morning because I like the way my garden looks when I get up in the morning, and I like it when it's cooler in the mornings, and I like seeing the birds out and all those types of things that you see in the morning. So I'm going to start waking up early. So for about a week, maybe just shy of a week, I was waking up early, so I started getting up at 7.30, 8 o'clock, 6.30 some days, and I thought to myself, self, this isn't working for me, and so I went back to waking up a little bit later, so now I'm up about 8.30, 9 o'clock, so it's not, I'm not sleeping until noon, I'm never, I've never been that person because I still have things that I, that I want to do, but I didn't really put the pressure on myself to have to, um, you know, wake up super early and 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 really rearrange my schedule. But I wouldn't have had that type of flexibility if I was working. But I also had to allow myself to be comfortable with that because what works today may not work tomorrow. And so I had to get comfortable. You start to get comfortable uh, in that place. And it, it takes a real mental shift. It really forces you pushing yourself to look at things different and allow yourself to operate in that gray, which is a place that as much as some of us say we love change and as much as some of us say we don't like structure, most of us rely on it. And if we go back and we look at our lives for the last week, then you look at the week before that, most of the time we've done about the same things every week. So that only took me, as I started to reintroduce myself, that took me about a month or so. So that was about the sixth month, sixth, seventh month in. Um, and then I then around the ninth month, around the ninth month is when I really started settling in. And I, I never and I and I think that's where I am now is I've really settled in and I don't think about work. I don't think about the people that I used to work with. I don't think about what it was like to have to go into the grind. I don't think about the stress that I had, and I just am able to live my life in the present, here and now, today. And there's a there's a there's a quote that uh, I heard, and it's it's from a show called Better Call Saul, and I, I thought it was incredible. And and what he says is is Michael is talking to Saul Goodman, and Saul Goodman is trying to figure out how things are going, how to get over something that happened in the past. And so I'm going to read the quote to you. I have it here. He says, here's what's going to happen. One day you're going to wake up, eat your breakfast, brush your teeth, go about your business. And sooner or later, you're going to realize you haven't thought about it. None of it. And that's the moment you realize you you can forget. And when you know that's possible, it all gets easier. And so for the first several months of my retirement, I was in a in a place of understanding that I'm retired, that I didn't have to go back to work, but any trauma, and I hate to use that word, but any trauma or any stress or any of the toxicity that I experienced from previous employers, it still sat with me and it still impacted how I viewed things going forward. And it also made me think about my future relationships. As I built relationships, I, I think we all reference the experiences we had, and if your most recent experiences impacted you in a certain way, then that's going to impact your ability to build some of these relationships. Or you're going to see that some of the relationships that you have were built around whatever that element was. And so it's, and so, and I recognize that, and I kept trying to push myself to get away from that. I don't want to feel that way. I don't want that. I don't want the resentment. I don't want the angst. I don't want any of that stress that comes with that type of feeling. And then one day I just woke up and I didn't think about it. And I still don't think about it. In fact, 
my wife and I were talking this last week and we were sitting on the couch and we said, wait a minute, is today Sunday? Because garbage day is on Monday and we always want to make sure we get our garbage cans out on time so we don't have garbage sitting on the side of the house. And I just hadn't thought about it. And I hadn't thought about it in so long that when I talk, except for the conversations I have on this channel, I never really reference my retirement. It's always other people that are regarding my retirement when it comes to stuff. I'm just living day to day. What am I going to do today? What is on the schedule today? What's happening tomorrow? What's going on on the latest? Who won what on the latest episode of The Price is Right? What's in the garden? What am I going to pick? When am I going to go see my mom? My mom called me up yesterday and wanted me to go help her move some stuff at her house. So I went over there and did that because, you know, I didn't have anything to do. And so when you really start to embrace, you start to settle in and then you're in a groove. And once you hit that groove, then it becomes smoother sailing because you're not burdened by the past. A lot of us are either burdened by the past or we're so anxious about the future that it either creates depression, which is when we focus too far in the past, or it creates anxiety when we focus on the things that we can't control going forward. And so once you settle into retirement and you start to understand that everything is okay, I have my time, I know what I'm going to do with my time, and I know what it is that I want to do, and you start to settle in, then you find yourself in that sweet spot where you're just looking for peace. And when you're in that peaceful place, it's easy to identify those things that disrupt your peace. And you focus on the things that enhance your calm. Um, when people come in and they start talking about work, it almost becomes a foreign concept to me because I haven't worked in a year. And it's funny how the mind works to almost repair itself and get yourself acclimated to the current day. And so that's a lot of what it is when when I'm settled. Now that I'm settled in, I just feel that peace. I don't feel the need to have a bunch of people around. I don't feel the need to put myself in situations that are uncomfortable for the good of the gander. I could just do uh, what's good for me and what's good for my wife and what's good for my family and stuff that I feel good about. Because at the end of the day, I don't think any of us wake up in the morning and, and don't want to feel good about ourselves or not feel good about the contribution we're making. And then it allows us the the capacity to be excited for other people, be excited for ourselves, to really do self-reflection and really live our best lives and be the best person that we can be. And look, some of us are able to do that while we're still working. Some of us can't. I have never claimed to be a perfect person. And, um, you know, in the Bible, they say thou is without sin, cast the first stone. And so, you know, none of us out there are perfect either. And so, but when we give ourselves license to be imperfect and let that imperfection just be who we are, then it's it's incredibly gratifying and it actually releases you from the from the obligation that you have yourself and lowers the stress level. And so that's where I am now. But again, it took those stages in order for me to get here, because if I didn't go through the excitement, if I didn't go through the confusion, if I didn't feel like I had to reintroduce myself to myself, really then I would have never been able to get to the place where I've settled in because I would have never confronted the things that the challenges that I had leading up to this point. And so, um, so on that note, um, I think I'm about done for the day. Um, I, I wanted to make this a quick one, but it was something that was on my mind because I, I think that there's, there's the idea of getting to the place where you can retire. But I also think there's the changes that you go through once you retire, that also creates angst for people and perhaps dissuades people from the idea of retirement. So I thought it was important to at least share that with you so you could you could think about that and, and understand that the feelings that you're going to have, you're going to have them. They're necessary. They're OK. I, I validate you for having those feelings. And I think it's incredibly important that you uh, deal with and manage those feelings. But they're all normal. And anybody that tells you that they didn't feel that way either wasn't taking what they were doing before they retired serious enough or they're just not being honest with themselves. And and either is true, and I'm sure there's a bunch of other scenarios. But I would ask that for any of you out there that are retired, and I, I've been – thank you for the comments. I, I love – I respond to every comment. So thank you for those comments. But for those of you that have, that have retired, 
tell me what your what your experience been what's the time frame been for you have you gone through different phases were there phases of apprehension were there phases of financial worry were there phases of you know whatever let me know in the comments and also let me know where you're from um one of the things that i notice a lot of is when i wake up in the morning it appears that overnight i that's when i get most of my views at least my initial set of views on my on my content and my shorts which leads me to believe that there's people from all around the country looking here. So um, I'm in Northern California, and uh, I know different people have different opinions about Northern California or about California in general. But uh, I'm here on the left coast and uh, doing what it is that, that we do here in California, still enjoying the good weather. So not like some of you that are getting snow right now. So, yeah, I just zung you on that one. But, no, let me know where you're from. Um, and let me know your perspective on on you know the stages that you've gone through through retirement. Also, if there's... If you, any of you have questions out there, feel free to leave those questions in the comments because I would be interested in answering some of those questions and putting some content around those questions because as much as um, as much as what I'm talking about deals with my journey, it really the where the rubber hits the road is where my journey can connect with your journey. And if I can help connect a perspective or at least give you some nugget to think about, as you look to retiring earlier, to living your best life, or just to dealing with something in general, um, that's what it's all about, and that's 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 where I try to get to. And if you and if you if the if you do find this content helpful, feel free to to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I put up new content a couple of times a week, and I try to do that without fail. And as we continue to grow the channel, I think we're up now to about. 453 people that are rocking with us so it's getting bigger and the bigger we get the more perspectives we get the more perspective we get the more reach we have the more reach we have the more people we can help and the more that your comments are going to be seen by others around the world and and help them because i think the, the stuff that we talk about isn't just a u.s centric uh, set of circumstances it's, it's around the world so um, so on that note, I'm going to go ahead and let you go, but uh, thank you again for taking time. You could have been anywhere else in the world right now, but you're here with me, and I appreciate that. So thank you for taking your time, and uh, have a good rest of your day, and I will talk to you soon.